castles had grown, tall and magnificent. But in the end, buried them alive. War between the ruling mages, blinded by their growing might, raged for centuries. But their recklessness had a price. Warring races, forced to call a truce, cast a powerful spell to keep their shattered world in balance. To achieve that, however, they used all the remaining resources of magic. Without their powers and their home, over centuries, refugees of the world they knew regressed into primitive tribes. Yet, now is the time of change, and new mages are born like a spark of hope. also returned. Now, the fate of Driftland lies in your hands. Greetings and welcome, fellow mages. To a new Let's Play, welcome. Let's play Driftland, Driftland the Magic Revival. Right. Something a little bit different, perhaps. <clears throat> so this game I saw at some point or another while I was just looking for some more, you know, strategy games to try out. Something new, something I hadn't seen before. And this one caught my eye a little bit because it sort of promised to be a... Um, well, it sort of used... Um, majesty uh, types of uh, control of uh, your your realm and of your heroes and all that, and that sort of spoke to me. Not saying that this is a perfect representation of what I would what would like <laughs> out of a game that does that, and I'm not saying that this game is like Majesty. It is not, but it is very nice nonetheless. It's a very very chill game, very... Well, I never really feel rushed during the campaigns, which is what we will be playing. Although there can be moments of intenseness if you want it to, but it definitely doesn't quite have the franticness yet in some of the missions in Majesty. Nor any of the real complexity in that way. Most of this game is fairly straight on with what it does and what it says it does. But let's get into it. We'll play the campaigns, all four of them. Now, it's being very enigmatic with what this last campaign is. I'll spoil it, it's Wood Elves. Which is sort of, you know, a mark against the game. Too many elves. I don't mind elves overall, but even I can see it's too many elves. It's also a little bit with the fact that I am... Um, I don't feel comfortable with the Wood Elves, to be honest. Uh, their mechanics feel a little bit weird to me. For some reason, the, the, the usual strategies that I employ with the other races just don't work with the Wood Elves. For whatever reason, it's as if their units are weaker, but they are decidedly not. They're just different. Which is kind of good in a way. But we'll see. I'll be skipping the tutorial because, well... Um, the tutorial can be a little, uh, the tutorial messaging device can be a bit oppressive, intrusive is the word actually, and it will keep being intrusive during the entire game as though it doesn't understand that you are, 
you know, well versed in the mechanics even after you've played it. Now, since I had to reinstall this game, uh, since I moved over to the new PC, it lost all my progress. Oh well, doesn't matter. Let us begin. So we are playing as a human mage who is uh, re-establishing a realm of his own. And he's coming into conflict with the other races, I think. Some of the storytelling could do with a little bit of work. I uh, could have done with a bit more work, perhaps. Yes. Alright, so mission. Light in the dark. Man. Emmerich remained in light-hearted mood, trivializing the forthcoming negotiations, yet being surprisingly committed to his arcane lessons after acquiring the ancient spellbook, the Heliar Grimoire. Woman. Weeds of foolishness grow on the soil of youth. Neither his brother nor his pre-ancient artifact could pull them up, it seems. We tried. I know the Alliance will require strong leaders and the joint effort of both races, regardless of their differences. Such a rare... Never mind, let's talk about the meeting. Emmerich has navigated his home island far to the northeast, to the Scar on the Forsaken Frontier. The desolated region between the realm of men and the swamps of the Sheer. The Dark Elves, the perfect place for the gathering. The place, however, was not desolate, and was far more dangerous than anyone could anticipate. Alright, so we need to increase population to 70 before the end of day 75. We meet, have to meet Shalria, and Urias has to stay alive. Mm. Alright, so we are going with difficulty... Um, well, Brave Mage is probably fine. <coughs> Yeah, in Skirmish, this game can be difficult, but it was also a bit tricky to play because there was still some bugs back when I played it. Alright, so here we have the Eye of Karas Muir, which looks human, but definitely is not. Sheldria, the Dark Elf Priestess, should meet us on one of these islands. We must find the exact place. We will find this place of gathering. I will await your orders, Emmerich. Alright, so Urias is the brother of Emmerich. And he's presently our uh, great knight. In the meantime, we should increase our population. The more people, the more possibilities. You should build your first cottage. It increases... Alright, let's skip the tutorial. Yes. I have used my abilities and marked the fire circle on the map. Chaldria should appear somewhere in that area. Then we could discuss a human and dark elf alliance with her. Alright, so let's stop following him. Yeah, like I said, the, the, the tutorial can be a little bit intrusive still. As if the game doesn't trust that you've learned what you need to learn. Alright, so we control this island mostly, and we've got a couple of bridges connecting to the neighboring islands. Uh, the more islands we connect up, the more powerful we become, but also things become more expensive as the more islands we um, put in. In which case you may want to reshuffle your islands if you want to, which you can do with the various magics that will unlock once you have enough uh, levels on your castle. But right now we have only limited amounts of spells. That's fine. We need to increase our population, like he said, so let's start doing that. We have got a little bit of food surplus, which is the main thing holding us back from having too much population. And we can only build... Hunger has become a real threat in your empire, my mage. You can avoid your disaster by building up and upgrading structures to produce food and assigning additional workers to the buildings. Alright, so we are indeed low on food. So let's upgrade it. Let's also build a bridge. And let's recruit some more explorers. Yeah. 
If you lose your castle or if you lose the island with your castle, you lose. Simple as that. Let's also get another marksman for gold and steel. Alright, so... We got some technology points for the path of progress, so... Let's increase... Let's increase the production. Alright, so... I don't know exactly what's on some of these islands, so let's have our people figure that out. So now we can see, we could, we could also have told them now uh, if we wanted something specific, particular done. But now that we have a little bit of uh, food surplus, let's just sign some additional workers to that. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and that will be fine so now we have extra food which does mean we have fewer people uh, collecting taxes which may reduce our gold income below a certain level you don't want to run out of gold that's annoying so we'll just set up some houses over here we can have three cottages on this island now, I do know that there is some wood and some stone on this island, but most likely it will not be profitable to go for it on this island. We do have some decent amount of wood on this island. And most likely no room to place any buildings. Alright. We got a lumberjack's cabin. We could do with a stonemason on this island, but that's not going to be very profitable. And we have already run out of gold. Right, so it takes a, a little time for workers to start arriving or being born, I guess. Right, so one resource has been discovered. There's uh, iron on this island. Good. As you can see, my explorers are busy discovering everything they need. In the meantime, I need some stone. And I suppose we can also set up some cottages on this island. We can put two cottages here. Alright, so this island doesn't really have any resources other than the stone at the moment. Here we have also some iron, but it's probably not profitable. And here I don't know yet. Now since this is a desert biome, uh, my people will not be thriving here and I probably don't want to uh, have people living here, but I can't currently turn it into... Um, into an island that we want but what I do want is to fortify my palace and to upgrade it All right, we still have some food let's upgrade some structures and increase our population alright we've discovered gold somewhere. Ooh, a nice deposit. Alright, let's get at least one worker in there. And can't quite improve more just yet. Let's just improve the cottages for now. Alright, so in, in order to improve my castle, I need more stone and I need a marketplace. That's fine. Let's see, the marketplace is... Uh, where is that? currently locked I think still I oh, know it's here I just need more stone all right let's improve our stone production then uh, I can put it to full most likely my cottages will fill up but I now also need some more food like I said 
Most of this game feels fairly mellow until you really get into uh, having to deal with enemies, which fortunately is not the case here. So while we're busy, let's tell our one knight to go explore all the various islands. None of these have any real priority. And we need to head up um, somewhere. And I guess we don't quite have enough vision yet to do anything. All right. But we kind of do want this island closer to us, so let us tell the islands to drift closer to us. Because we want this nest. Alright, so currently we have the Huntsman. I don't have any facilities for upgrading them. Alright, I could do with a Knight's Garrison. Since I can't build any other structures, I'll put that one there. Oop. Got a Wild Raven over here. Alright, that's fine. Go chase it. Then I can build a bridge. And set that to be attacked. Alright. Yeah, my treasury is full enough for the moment. Alright, we also have some bandits over here, but that's fine. Knight has joined my ranks. Right, fine. And we got food coming in. We got gold coming in. So let's improve our wood production. No, not that much. Right, let's tell them to capture that chest. One is the eagle's nest. And currently, one of my archers. Marksman is fighting for this nest for the Wild Raven, which is fine, that'll give him some experience. In the meantime, my food is still too low, so let's improve that. And let's make sure we get, keep coming and getting enough uh, money. Clean up. Yay, and now it's mine. And I can recruit a raven for gold. Which I will. And similarly with the eagle's nest. Now the eagle's nest I can't quite use just yet because I need hero tier level 2. Which I don't currently have. Because that requires that I level up the uh, hero buildings, which I can only do once I've upgraded my castle. Which requires that I build a marketplace. Which I can only do over here. It's so very neat all. But I should probably consider actually building some uh, useful structures like gold mines, but I need a castle level 3 for that. Right, so we really need to get our castle upgraded. Now, ravens are basically the basic uh, tier mounts you can get. Which is nice, because now my marksman has a raven. Which, essentially, you want all your heroes to uh, have access to flying birds. But it's technically not strictly speaking necessary, it's just convenient for the most part. Alright, let's also start connecting over to here. Now you don't have to drift every island closer to you, you can just form a chain because you kind of also want to be able to get um, further along in the field because you can't drift your enemy's thing over. Alright, so she's over here. Alright, so we want to slowly move north. Alright, let's attack that raven's nest. Now, 
Urias is riding a... Um, They need more skills, but for that, I need a blacksmith and a... Well, the blacksmith is really all I can get right now, so that I can prove my knights. I need a shooting range, but that requires something I can't get in this mission. It's a little bit annoying. All right, but I can upgrade my castle. Alright, so let's get some skills for my, uh, my people. At the moment I kind of want the resources, so that's fine. There's also some skills over here that I can give my heroes. And here are some skills for my heroes. Now, there's a limited amount of things you can give your heroes. They can only have four skills, and I don't think I can tell them to not take certain skills. I could get another explorer, don't really need it. Now what I need right now is iron. Which requires wood. That's fine, we uh, will have that soon. I could trade for resources, but the exchange rate is usually not all that great. Or, um, I wanted to turn wood into gold, for instance. I wanted to turn gold into wood. That's a decent enough exchange rate. I guess. It's still too much. But oh well. That'll do for this episode. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.